Hey everybody, James Osborne here, founder of Invest Asset Management. We're gonna talk about the CARES Act today, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act. I'm gonna go through some brief highlights on what it means to individuals and families. So key discussion points today, we're gonna to go through the background of the CARES Act. We're gonna talk about rebates, how it applies to individuals and families, unemployment compensation, student loans, and retirement accounts. So a little bit about us. I am James Osborne, the founder of Invest Asset Management. We are a financial advisory practice. We're independent, we're fiduciary fee only. We provide in-person and virtual financial planning and investment management services, but we focus on sustainable investing. So we take into consideration your ethics when it comes to your finances. We are a certified B Corp. We practice what we preach and some big name certified B Corps that you've probably heard of are names like Patagonia, Athleta, Ben and Jerry's. So we're really proud to be in, in the company of those great institutions. Like I said, we practice what we preach. We try to do good while doing business. So a little background on the CARES Act. Well, it stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act. It was enacted not too long ago, March 27th. $2 trillion in actual spending is what they're going to be putting out to the general public small businesses and other businesses. And in fact, experts estimate that it's gonna be closer to $6 trillion when you include loan guarantees and tax rebates and other things that they're providing. $2 trillion is a lot of money. It's 10% of the US gross domestic product. So what's it supposed to do? Well, it's supposed to help families and individuals. It provides rebates, it extends unemployment and increases unemployment payments, it relaxes student loan payments, relaxes rules on using retirement accounts, among other things. For small businesses, which we won't talk about yet, we'll talk about that in another episode, it provides non-recourse loans through the Paycheck Protection Program. It provides tax credits. It defers payroll taxes and also allows 100% net operating losses with five-year carryback. But like I said, we're not going to talk about small businesses today, but what we are going to talk about is how it helps families and individuals. So rebates for families and individuals. These are checks that are coming your way. So what are the highlights? Well, it's actually based on 2020 taxes. So the money that you're making today in 2020, which is kind of funny, but how are they going to determine what we make today? Well, the government decided to say, Let's look at your 2019 filings if you have filed them. And if you haven't filed them, let's look at 2018 filings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at your adjusted gross income, at your AGI. That's different from your taxable income, which includes usually standard deductions or itemized deductions. So there's a big distinction. So what does this mean? Well, there's these things called phase outs, which it's basically a threshold. If you make below $75,000 in adjusted gross income as an individual, single, filing single, then you'd be eligible for a full rebate. For head of household, that's $112,000 where the phase out begins. If you're married filing jointly, that's $150,000. So how does it work? Well, it's a non-taxable rebate. That basically means that the government said that you've overpaid for your taxes, and then you're gonna get that money back. That's essentially how it's working. So what's it mean for singles? Well, like I said before, if you're below that $75,000 threshold on adjustable gross income, you're gonna get $1,200 back from the government. If you're a head of household, it's 1,200 plus 500 times the number of children that are in your household. Married filing jointly, it's $2,400 plus $500 times the number of children. But here's the catch. The children must be under 17 years old. So if the child is still a dependent, for example, maybe you have a college age student that's 18, 19, 20, 21, they may be dependents for tax purposes, but that does not qualify you for that additional $500. So what does adjusted gross income look like on your tax forms? Let's take a look. For 2018, it's line seven 
is where you wanna look for your adjusted gross income. For 2019 tax returns, it's line eight. So take a look at line eight for your adjusted gross income on 2019 tax returns. For 2018 tax returns, it's line seven. So there is a difference here. So what does it look like graphically? Well, this is what it looks like. For single, you get the full rebate of 1200 until you reach 7500 and then it steps down. And the step down is the same for all the programs. It's you lose $5 for every $100 uh, over that threshold. So here it is for head of household plus one kid, head of household for two kids. Here it is for married, married one kid. One more, married two kids. And this keeps going up. So for example, if you're married with six kids, which I have a friend that has six kids, his threshold actually starts much higher. So he's married plus six kids, he gets 2,400 plus another 3,000. So that's $5,400. He'd be starting up here off my chart and it would take him longer to phase out. So although the phase out begins at $150,000 for married filing jointly, it takes long for him to phase out. So that's what you wanna look at. So what about the pathway? What determines the rebate itself? Well, it's based off of 2020 income, but because we haven't finished our 2020 year yet, we're gonna actually look at 2019 and 2018. So let's take a look. Is your income less than the threshold? You know, if you're single, head of household, or filing jointly. If the answer is yes, you get a rebate today. So then let's fast forward a year for 2020, you know, the income that you made in your, in your 2021 tax season. Whether you're gonna take a look at your income, is your income still below that threshold? If the answer is yes, well, guess what? You get to keep the rebate. If it's not, guess what? Good deal. You still get to keep the rebate. On the other hand, what if your income is above that threshold? Well, unfortunately, you do not get a rebate today. Fast forward a year from now when you're paying your taxes for 2020, is your income less than that threshold? Well, the good thing is, is yeah, you will get a rebate. And of course, if you're over that threshold, then no, you won't get a rebate. So that's the basic structure of how it's working. A few other things that I want to touch on before we move to the next slide. The first is where is this money going to go? So if you currently have electronic deposit with the IRS, this money will go directly to your checking account that you have described with them. If you receive checks from the IRS, it's going to go back to the address that you have on record with them. But if you moved over the past year and you get a check, that might not make it to your new house, your new address. So what you wanna do is fill out IRS form 8822 to make sure that you receive that check. And what about for retirees? Well, it goes wherever your social security check goes. So if it's direct deposit with social security, it's gonna to go to direct deposit. If you get a check from social security, it's gonna to go to that location. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to check to see if you've moved that the IRS knows where your money is going to be going if you are going to receive a physical check and not a direct deposit. So what about unemployment compensation? So under the new program, it's more flexible, it's longer, and there's a lot more money. So they broke it up into different sections. There's this pandemic unemployment assistance program, and that opens up the universe of unemployment for people that are self-employed independent contractors, sole proprietors, they can now receive unemployment. Well, what else did they do, the government? Well, they created this pandemic unemployment compensation program. And what that is, is it's an adder to your standard unemployment. So it's $600 per week extra that lasts up to four months. There's a pandemic emergency unemployment extension which adds an additional 13 weeks of unemployment. And generally, most states, you'd have to check, but most states, it's 26 weeks. For example, I'm based in Connecticut, our company's based in Connecticut, and it's 26 weeks. Well, now it goes out to 39 weeks. So that's a great extension for people that in need. It also incentivizes 
the states to use short time compensation programs, which basically means uh, for reduced hours workers, they'd be eligible for unemployment compensation. There's no waiting period under typical unemployment. You have to wait a week before you apply and, and receive checks. Well, under this new program, you get those checks, I'll say immediately. It's actually when it gets finally gets processed, you'll get those checks. One tip that I've heard though, is that you will want to backdate your application to your termination date because things are supposed to be retroactive. But before we go on to the next slide, what I wanna talk about is how does this work? So this is just based off of Connecticut. And in Connecticut, the max benefit that you can receive is $650 per week, roughly, $649. With the CARES increase, you get another $600. So that means your total benefits uh, per week could potentially be roughly $1,250 a week. And that's for 16 weeks. In other words, that's up to four months. That's 16 weeks, that's almost $20,000 over that 16-week period. So what happens after that 16-week period? Well, I call it this extension period. Uh, but basically, the CARES increase phases out, so you're still making $650 per week, but it lasts 23 weeks instead of, like I said, you get an additional 13 weeks. So instead of only having 10 weeks extra, you get 23 weeks extra, and that totals about $15,000. So it can really help uh, families and individuals in need right now. So what about student loans? Well, the government is actually helping us out with these as well. So there's huge relief for borrowers. But before we talk and dig in a little bit more, we're gonna talk about federal student loans versus private loans. So often what's miscommunicated is that you could have federal student loans, which comes from the federal government, or you could have private student loans, which, which comes from private lenders. This is only for federal student loans. But I also wanna make one more distinction. Don't forget, Student loans doesn't just mean it's the students that borrowed. It could be parents that borrowed for the students. In other words, parent loans, if they're federal loans. And they are also eligible for this program. So what's going on here? Well, there's no payment requirements until September 30th, 2020. So that's six months of no payments, roughly. No interest will accrue during that time. That means that you're paying 0% interest during that time, which is great, right? It's, it's free money. And another great thing about it, it will count towards loan forgiveness programs. So let's say you're in the public service loan forgiveness program or some sort of income-based driven forgiveness program, this six months will be included in that program. And it won't be, in other words, you don't have to extend your forgiveness program by six months. So that's great. So you definitely want to take a look at this. What loans qualify? Well, it's federal loans only, like I said before, not private, but it includes direct loans, unsubsidized, subsidized loans, direct parent loans, direct grad plus loans, direct consolidated loans. What loans don't qualify? Well, unfortunately, like I said, private loans don't, Perkins loans don't, federal family education loans don't. But I want to be perfectly clear. You want to make sure that you're your student loan service provider, it could be like a Nelnet or a Sally Mae or some other, make sure that they have you on this program. Don't, don't stop making payments. Continue to make payments until you verify that you're in this program because you don't want to end up getting in a situation where you've you know, missed a payment or have a late payment or a late fee or anything like that. So it's supposed to be automatic, but you just want to double check to make sure that it is there. And by the way, for those that have private loans, interest rates have come down quite a lot. There could be a refinancing opportunity as well, or you can talk to your private lender and see what types of programs that they have. So there's options. There might be options for you as well. And that's completely separate from what the federal is doing. This would be, you know, based off of what the company wants to do to service their customer. So what about retirement accounts? Well, there's been some big changes there too. So distributions from retirement accounts have actually increased. They're now allowing up to $100,000 from IRAs or employer plans or a combination of to be used during this time. So that basically means 
if you want, you could take $100,000 out of your IRA, assuming you have that much, and zero out of an employer plan. Or you could take $100,000 out of your employer plan, which might be your 401k, 403b, and zero dollars out of your IRA. Or you could do 50,000 and 50,000, or any combination of $100,000. But it must be made in 2020. And you have to self certify that it's a COVID related instance or a COVID related need. So, in other words, you need to be diagnosed with COVID 19. Your spouse or dependent has to be diagnosed. You have to experience an adverse financial effect. So maybe you, won't, you weren't able to take your kid to childcare anymore. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your work hours were reduced. But anything related to COVID-19, self-certified, that should make you eligible for the program. So what are the rule changes on the actual distributions? This is what helps other than the amount that you can take out. Well, the biggest thing is you're exempt a 10% early withdrawal penalty if you're under 59 and a half. And 10% is a lot of money. That's $10,000 off of $100,000 that you would lose. So that's great, right? You get to keep that. There's no mandatory tax withholding from an employer plan. Remember, these plans are generally pre-tax plans, meaning you put them in before you pay taxes. When you take them out, you have to pay taxes. So from an employer plan, they're saying, okay, you don't have to pay the taxes up front. You can use that money for the things that you need. However, we will get that money back from you, those taxes from you in the future. What else can happen? Well, the money that you don't use can be rolled back into an account over the next three years. And like I said before, like I said before, you have the option to have that income tax spread either all at once, you do have to pay it, just not up front. All at once, meaning next year, or spread over the next three years. So you can pay that amount over the next three years, that income, and it will be taxed as income. So what about specifically for employer plans? Well, we talked about this a little bit before. You can get a loan increase to $100,000. It used to be 50. You can use 100% of your vested balance, which is also good. And then for retirement accounts themselves, if you have to take required minimum distributions, well, it's suspended in 2020. So that includes your IRAs, your employer plans, your 403Bs, 457Bs. All those are suspended for those that are required to take minimum distributions, suspended in 2020. And let's say you were a little bit late. You were supposed to start taking payments in 2019 based off of your age. Well, guess what? That helps procrastinators. You don't have to take the money out. So if you don't need it, you might want to leave it in there and let the money work for you. But definitely talk to your financial advisor on retirement accounts and how that might impact your long-term financial plan. So that's it from Invest Asset Management. You know, if you have any questions about the CARES Act, I'd love to give you more information and more details. You can schedule a meeting online, free strategy consultation sessions. Again, we provide financial planning, investment management, alternative investments and consulting focused on sustainability. In other words, we want to help you align your ethics with your investments in your finances. Again, we are a certified B Corp. Please feel free to reach out anytime that you want. Investam.com, james.osborne at investam.com. And with that, I'd like to thank you for sticking around for this presentation.